Hello and welcome back to another instalment of our I Speak Electric series. Today we're opening up a bit of a discussion and would love to hear from you at the end of the video in the comments below. Well, the race for bigger batteries and longer range cars is raging on. But we want to stop for a moment today and consider the question, how much range do I really need? Hello, my name is Martin Lee. Welcome to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so down there. Hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. So let's just make sure we're all on the same page, should we? What do we mean when we say range? Well, of course, we mean how far your car can take you on a single charge right? So you'd probably say from 100% full down to 0%. But with electric vehicles, we think differently than perhaps driving a combustion car when you can wait till the light is on and find a gas station and pull in and fill up to the top. Often with electric vehicles, once you're down to 10 or 5%, lots of people feel a little more comfortable with finding a charging station and plugging in. But let's face it, the biggest question we're all asked as EV drivers is, Nice car, what's the range? Now that that's out of the way, how about taking a moment to give the whole discussion some perspective? Well, if we were having this discussion 10 years ago, we'd be talking about the Nissan Leaf, and it had a range on a good day with a fair wind behind you of about 130 kilometers. On a bad day, on a motorway, in winter, with cold temperatures, under 100 kilometers, less than 60 miles. But these days, it's rare to get an EV on the road that has a range of less than 200 kilometers. The likes of the Hyundai Kona will take you much more than 400 kilometers. And the latest Nissan Leaf will get you three times as far as the original ones. But the envelope is being pushed constantly. Three to 400 kilometers of range is no longer seen as massively impressive. A Tesla Model 3 long range will take you over 500 kilometers on a charge. Cars have already been announced that will surpass these figures comfortably, and we'll get to that later. It's worth pointing out at this stage that different countries put different demands on the question of how much range do I need? Where am I? For instance, well, here in the UK, it would be rare for anyone to take on a road trip in the same way as, well, my friends in the US might. I could drive from the very bottom of our country to the very top of Scotland. I could do Land's End to John O'Groats and still only do 840-ish miles. And that's driving the entire length of our country. We're a small island. Road tripping means a different thing to a large country. Added into that, the charging infrastructure, wherever you may live, is very important. Now, some countries and regions have embraced EVs more than others. And there's the weather with cold climates hurting range even more. So if you're figuring how much range you actually need, consider where you're living and how much charging infrastructure is around you. And now we get on to perhaps the crux of the matter, commuting versus pottering versus road trips. And I do hope the word pottering translates to where you're watching this around the world. <laughs> Let's talk about the different ways that you might use your car. Let's face it, the most important factor determines how much range you actually need. Some cars are used for daily commutes. For your work, you might have a 50 or 60 mile journey to work, maybe more, and the same back again. Well, someone like that will clock up a lot of miles in a year. But even though they might do 20, 30,000 miles in a year, they could still drive a second-hand 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf and it would work just fine. Can they charge at both ends, maybe at home and at work? Well, the distance between those two points then effectively becomes the range. Do you stop every day for a coffee and croissant on the way to work? Is there charging there? Remember, the driving an EV requires a mindset change over the whole filler up mentality of gasoline. Now for others, the car might just be used for pottering around town and running around doing chores, picking up the kids from school and doing the weekly shop. For uses like this, a very small battery wouldn't be an issue at all. And of course, a smaller battery is lighter, that's more efficient. How much range do you really need when doing those jobs? If you're doing 50 miles a week, then even the original Renault Zoe or Nissan Leaf has more than enough range in a full charge to do that. 
in a week. The last category is where it starts to get a little more tricky. This is the type of driving that's more intermittent, less regular. We're talking road tripping. Holiday destinations that you drive to, visiting friends and family on holidays. You know what I mean? Those trips that you do every so often that might be 300, 400, 500, 1,000 miles. At that stage, I mean, there's not even a fossil car that could cover that distance on a full tank. But this is where so-called range anxiety gets replaced with bladder anxiety. I mean, is it comfortable, even safe, to sit in the same driver's seat for four or five hours straight without stopping for a break? In this scenario, think about charging along the routes that you might commonly do for those semi-regular road trips. Is there a good enough charging network or destination charging at your you know, destination. You'd be surprised how easy it is to road trip in an EV when you look at where you're charging. And with more chargers being installed all the time, it's getting easier. So what does the future hold? Just think of the changes we've seen since the Nissan Leaf hit our roads 10 years ago. And the progress is not stopping. In the next year or so, we're gonna have cars on the road that will comfortably do 600 kilometers on a single charge and then recharge at a rate of over 200 kilowatts. The Lucid Air has a 113 kilowatt hour battery. For a bit of perspective, that's a car that can do a 1,000 kilometer journey and stopping for just half an hour on the way, which you were doing anyway for hopefully a toilet break and grabbing some refreshments. So there you have it, folks, another episode of our I Speak Electric series. As usual, it's time for me to stop talking and for you to start. Have your say in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you. How much range do you really need? Are we chasing bigger batteries just for the sake of it, like some sort of weird game of top trumps? Is faster and more ubiquitous charging actually more important with a smaller battery but faster charging stops and more regular stops? Does that make the need for carrying around a heavy, huge battery redundant? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. If you like what we do here on the channel, give us a thumbs up and it tells us to make more videos just like this and we'll see you on the next one.